Hi guys, so I'm Katarina Eames. Um, ignore the way that I look today. I don't, I promise I don't normally have a mustache, but it's Comic-Con today. So I was at Comic-Con and then came here and I'm going back to Comic-Con. <laughs> so I have to warn you beforehand that I had a bit of a technical difficulty this morning. I went to go and check my slides, make sure everything was in order and they had all disappeared. So I have about three slides and then we're gonna do the rest on Sublime. And hope I remember my notes. <laughs> so I'm excited to see how this goes. So I'm guessing most of you are technical programmers or are getting into the programming if you're not already in programming, but you don't do CSS normally. I'm guessing that's true for most of you, if not all of you. So CSS can be very, very, very confusing especially when you get to padding and border and you're trying to place things on the screen and make it look better and you're like, why isn't this working? But the basics of CSS always start with the selectors. So they have three different kinds of selectors. You have the type selector, which is like paragraph or div or link or anything else that's just the type. Then you have the ID selectors, which are the highest in the ranking of selectors. They're the most specific kind, and they only affect that one element that has that one unique ID. The class is more specific than the type selector, but not as specific as the ID selector. Now, selectors have kind of a rank. There's, so type is 0, 0, 1 is the, number of like higher hierarchy for the, for the type selector. Uh, class selector is 0, 1, 0, and ID selector is 1, 0, 0. Now you can mix and match IDs and you can mix and match um, types with classes and IDs so you can affect all of the um, uh, character class in a paragraph. Or you can affect all of the paragraphs in a div and then that um, hierarchy number would be 002. You don't want to make, now when you're doing and you're selecting things to stylize and customize, you don't want it to get super, super specific, otherwise something will break and you'll be left sitting in your chair with your head in your hands screaming at CSS. Now the next things are property and value. So the property is what you want to change and the value is what you're changing it to. So changing the color to orange of the paragraph. Now we get to use Sublime to do the rest of my talk. So there are lots of different ways to use color. My favorite way is hex, which I assume most of you know. So if you want to change it to orange, you could do FF6600. Oh. 6, 6, that's 9. F, F, 6, 6, 0, 0. There we go. So with hex coding, it's RGB, red, glee, green, and blue. So FF is fully red. Uh, G is two sixes, and blue is no blue. So it ranges on a scale of 0 to 9 and A to F. You can use numbers and letters and change it to whatever you want the color to be. So hex is useful, is kind of the best one because you can do more colors with it and you can get more things. And if it's like this, then you can shorten it to F60. So if the two reds are the same and the two blues are the same and the two greens are the same, you can change it to just three, num three characters. Now another kind, of color is RGB. I can having difficulty typing today. So RGB is kind of like hex, except you don't you use a scale of zero to 255. Zero is white and 255 is black. So orange, I believe, was 255. something or other, I'm gonna do 90, and then zero. I don't think that's orange, but. So that's how you would do it is 
the number of however much red you want, however much green you want, and then however much blue you want. You can also make it so that it has an A, which is like <coughs> transparency. And that's on a scale of zero to one using decimals. So if you wanted it half transparent, it would be 0.5. And then you would have whatever color this is at half transparency. Another one you can use is HSL. HLS? HSL, which is hue, saturation, and lighting. And that one, orange is 24, so that's the hue. It's on a scale of 360, 365 on the color wheel. So 24 is orange, and then 100% saturation, and 100% lightness. Now this one you can also add a transparency rule to, which is again A, and then a decimal point, so 0.5. So orange, that's half transparent, and the saturation is full, and the lightness is full. So lightness is like how white it is or how black it is. And saturation is like how nice the color looks, I believe, saturation. So that's one thing. That's mostly the easiest part, are colors, because if you don't know how to what the heck's code for a color is. You can look it up on Google. That's the easiest thing, is colors. Now, when it comes to spacing and alignment, that's when people get frustrated. That's when I get frustrated. <coughs> so CSS uses this thing called the box model, which is um, you have the element that you have and its height and width, and then you have the border, no, the padding, then the border, than the margin. So padding is between the element and the border. The border is what gives it color, and then the margin is what places, spaces that element from another element. So padding, if there are shorthand and longhand rules for padding and uh, border and margin. So with padding, the shorthand you can, is just padding and then 20 pixels. That means you have padding on all side that's equal to 20 pixels. If you wanted to have uh, padding on the, I believe it's width, then height first. Top, top, yeah? Yeah, yeah so is, is that uh, on the outside of the uh, element, between the elements? Or no. The element? Padding is inside of the element. Okay. Margin is outside of the element. I know it's really confusing. I don't like it. So. It's top, bottom, left, right. So if I wanted the top and bottom to have 20 pixels of padding and then the left, right to have 10 pixels, I would do it like that. Or if I wanted the top to have 20 pixels, the bottom to have 10 pixels, the left to have five pixels, and the right to have four pixels, I would do it like that. Of course, that gets really boring and long to type. There are other ways to do it where you do padding dash whichever one you want to do. So padding dash, dash top, which only affects the padding on the top. Or the same goes for padding bottom, padding left, padding right. Whichever you specify, it only affects that padding and the rest are at zero. Now the border element does the same with the top, uh, top bottom, left, right. But it has, um, Color, style, and width, I believe is the order that it goes in. So let's say red with, you don't want commas in this, so red with a dashed border that's, 20 seems big, that's five pixels wide. And that would give you a dashed border of red that's five pixels. And you can do that, again, with the dash top, so it only affects the top, dash bottom, so it only affects the bottom, dash left, dash right, so it only affects those elements. The margin is almost exactly the same as the padding, except with margin, you cannot do top and bottom elements if you're doing an inline element. Padding and border you can use on inline elements, but Margin, you can't. I don't know why, you just can't. Let's see, 137, okay. I have a few more minutes. So, it's kind of 
padding, the spacing and alignment is the hardest thing you can do because there's inline, there's, um, oh, what was the other term? There's inline elements and there's, then you can make things float if you want to make them float, which I'm not even going to get into because floating is even harder. And when you're doing all of this, you have to keep in line that there's a cascade. CSS stands for cascading style sheet. So if I had, um, let's go back to using hex. So if I had a paragraph that had the color of orange, and then below it I had another paragraph that had the color of white, then it would make the paragraph the second color, not the top color. Because it goes, okay, I'll make it, I'll make it this color. Oh, you went on a different color, I'm gonna make it that color instead. So you have to keep that in mind whenever you're doing any kind of styling. If the one that you want it to do is underneath another, is on top of another one of the same kind and you don't specify, then it will do the second one and you'll be sitting there wondering, why isn't my paragraph orange? I want it orange. Why is it white? I don't want it this color. Why isn't it working? It's because it does a cascade. Now the inline elements, that's floating again. So inline elements are kind of difficult to explain, but there are inline elements which, so block level elements are what I was, the word I was thinking of. So there's block level, inline level, and inline block level. So using those, you can do a bunch of different things, and using those, it affects each one. So the inline levels can, only do, can sometimes only do certain things, and the inline block can sometimes only do certain things, and the block can only do certain things. Inline block is usually the best one that you want to go with, and each element has a specific set one. I don't know what all of them are. I don't know which ones are. Uh, immediately set as inline or which ones are immediately set as block and I don't believe any are immediately set as inline block. But if you want to specify that, um, you just do display. Like if we wanted this to be a block element, we do display block. We don't want the hashtag though. Don't want the hashtag. Hashtag is only for hex code and IDs. That's another thing. IDs are hashtags. Class, you want to um, begin it with a dot so that it knows that you're affecting the class or the ID or just the type element. So CSS is kind of confusing and there are a bunch of different rules for a bunch of different elements for a bunch of different types and selectors and what you can and can't do in those types and selectors and what values you can use on the properties and it's just a big jumble of words, but if there are lots of different books, I just found this at my library, How to Code HTML and CSS by uh, Shay Howe. So this one is actually really good. I studied this for like a week to learn how to do this. I'm not very good at retaining information, but it's a good book and there are lots of different ones. There's How to Code CSS for Dummies, HTML and CSS3 for Dummies. You can literally find like anything in your library if you're not quite sure how to do it or if you still are confused on different things. And if you want to get into the floating, that you would want to do some research in because floating is more difficult than anything else in CSS, in my opinion. So is that, how long do I have? How long, much longer do I have? 10 minutes, two, 15 minutes. Okay, we have 15 minutes left. My notes are gone, so I don't know what else I was going to talk about. <laughs> okay. Oh, developer tools. Those things are helpful. Okay, so in one of my other talks that I did with my dad, um, we were looking at a Tumblr blog and for some reason, the header that we had wasn't centered, it was off. Even though it said that it was centered, it was off. 
wasn't inside the little nice circle that they had for your header to go in. So we had to go in and use the developer tools to find out what was wrong. So uh, the developer tools, you can just use the little, uh, oh, what's that thing Sherlock Holmes uses? Yeah, the spyglass. Magnifying spy glass. Magnifying glass, spyglass, that thing. You click on that and you click on whatever element it is that isn't functioning properly. You can look at the CSS and you can actually like click on what you want to go away without deleting any code. So you can see, okay, that affects that, this affects this, and oh, that's why it was doing that and I, you can get rid of that line. So developer tools are really helpful if you're stuck for whatever reason. Uh, I can show a demo. See, look, look at how terrible that is. It's not even close to centered, which is quite annoying. So using the developer tools, let's control, alt, C. There we go, I got it. So we can click here. I don't want console. No, it doesn't, it's not functioning for me. See? So that ruins it even further. That doesn't really help us. But now we can see, oh, the padding, if we get rid of the padding, then that's what the problem is. And then we can come in here and mess with the padding and say, uh, let's do 130. Close, 120, 110, and that's mostly centered. There's a bunch of other text because my intro is really long on my Tumblr blog. Yeah. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. yeah so that's <laughs> one way you can use the CSS. I don't like this theme, but. And then there's also, like, you can. So that's one way you can use the developer tools. Or in those rare instances like here, you can see that there's a border around this circular element. How do you do said border, you may ask? Well, it's border dash radius is what gets you if you have a kind of rounder shape or if you want curved corners on your box or if you have like an eye shape <coughs> or an oval, bless you, or a circle. Uh, border dash radius will get you the curved lines of the border that you want. And that's, um, it says it goes left to right, left to right. Top or bottom, left, right again. Top, bottom, left, right. So border top dash right dash radius, if you want, I believe that does the little eye shape that it says here in the book. And, uh, the border rule for radius, the border rule is clockwise fashion, starting at the top left of the element. So if you want rounded corners, then you do border dash radius, and you can decide how many pixels you want it to be rounded. And there are browser-specific properties and values which make things even harder for us poor techies who are trying to make our websites look nice and trying to figure out how to use CSS and why my web page isn't showing the way that I wanted. I had an idea and it's not working. So um, browser specific ones, you can, uh, there's ones for Mozilla, Microsoft Internet Explorer because people still use that for some reason. And WebKit, which is Google Chrome and Apple Safari. So, uh, hmm, I didn't read this box. There's box sizing, border boxes, positioning with floats. So floats, it says, oh, there's, that's padding left, but you could also use a float if you wanted to, which doesn't affect the padding or the margin. It just slowly makes things float whichever way you want it to float. So if you want something to float that, like left, you would do float, you would type it like this. So border float left, or float right, float top, float bottom. And then that just makes it so it moves more left. And then after that, you can affect the margin and the width 
and make it so that it moves the way that you want it to and it floats the way that you want it so that it looks good. And you can use that if you want like text here and then a picture here. You can use that and use the diff like make so it's things aren't inline. Inline, I believe, is the one that takes up the entire space and block is just how much room it needs. So divs, I believe, are inline elements. No, block. Divs are block elements. So divs are block elements. So those take up however much room they need. Pictures also just take up however much room they need. They don't take up the entire space unless you have like a giant picture. But then again, that's just taking up however much room it needs. How much time? Okay, I can finish. I don't want to like ramble more by looking through my book and trying to find more things because my notes disappeared. <laughs> so I'm going to call it here. And uh, so resources I used f to learn CSS are codecademy.com that has a really nice um, course on HTML and CSS. It doesn't go very f deeply into the CSS, but it's enough that most people get what they need out of it. And if you want to go really deep into CSS, Learn to Code HTML and CSS by Shay Howe was really good, and it had really good um, descriptions and <coughs> examples and pictures to look at and to use. So thank you for coming to listen to my talk. <laughs>